It's another season of Orange football, and that means another Perry's inside scoop as we welcome you in with the head coach of the Cuse, Dino Babers. And, Coach, so good to see you. So good to have game week. I can't believe we're here, first of all, and I hope with all that's going on in the, uh, the light of Perry's that you had some sort of fun over the summer. You know, I'm, I'm excited about game week as well. I'm, I'm crossing my fingers. I'm so excited. I just want to make sure it happens. It's like the day before Christmas. I want to make sure that the next day is Christmas so we can open the presents because that would be outstanding. But the, the summer was very unique. Obviously, there was a lot of things. But uh, one of the things that I really got out of it was I started taking these. Uh, I thought they were nature walks with my uh, oldest daughter that just graduated with her, her, her graduate degree from Syracuse. But they turned into competitions about how much she could make daddy sweat and make his feet hurt uh, by before she got home. So I think it started off with two mile walks and before it was all said and done, there was a couple of eight mile uh, excursions in there with some slow jogs, normally downhill and not up. But uh, she was working on my uh, conditioning and working on my body weight, but she, she did a good job. I lost weight, I didn't gain weight. She did, she did a good job during the pandemic. Well, that's awesome because I know that had to be a challenge really for everybody in general, but let alone the uh, finely tuned athletes that you're working with, really to stay disciplined, right? And to stay on task physically, uh, getting ready for this year through unprecedented circumstances. It really was, and it's probably, you know, growing up in our, our era, which is a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, you know, we didn't have trainers and pe other people who trained us. You, you got together as, with your buddies and you worked out in the parks or you jogged around the neighborhood. But this pandemic was a situation where the guys had to go home and they had to do it on their own. And, and it was really unique with the Zoom calls between the strength department and, and position coaches uh, telling the guys what they could do instead of lifting weights, chair push-ups. Uh, you can do this with your table. You can squat and, and do these things. You can push cars. You know, you put the car, you know, you're giggling, but you push uh, the car, put the car in neutral and how you can push car and strengthen your lower body. So I, I thought that was unique and it was kind of fun to see the uh, millennials go back to the, the old way of doing things and realizing they can get stronger, bigger, stronger, faster, and they don't have to go to a health club to do it. So rustic workouts, that's part of uh, the COVID-19. Let's get into these protocols and just how you're approaching it here, because I think that's the nature of taking fans inside you have had to rally the troops in a bubble environment how would you characterize the the way the team and staff have handled what they're facing here in terms of the preparedness to get to this game week i i think first of all I, it was a acquiring of knowledge you know you you acquire you don't i don't have the knowledge i have to go get it from other health officials uh health county officials uh doctors you know, not only in the, in the community of Syracuse, but all across the country. And then, you know, obviously when you have your team spread out, everybody's back home, they're acquiring information as well. And then you throw all that information into a pot and everyone thinks that what they've got is the right ingredient. And what they heard is, is uh, uh, what they heard from somebody else. Maybe they're, what they may think is the right ingredient. And you kind of have to sift through and find out what's really real news and what's really fake news. But once we got through all that, all those growing pains, I think that uh, the protocol that we have here at Syracuse is second to none. Uh, you would say, well, of course he's going to say that, but I'll put the numbers to it. And uh, let's, put a light, let's put a light on it and go all the way across the country. And if we're not in the top, the top four, top five teams in the country, then I'd like to see those numbers because I'm really proud of what the team has accomplished with the medical professionals, with the trainers, with everybody in the community. And I don't think we need to take a backseat to anyone when it comes to it. No, it looks like the testing has backed that up. I know the testing is ramping up this week. You do have a couple of players uh, apparently opting out, and we'll uh, get into the football talk at a later time. How does this work, Coach, just logistically? You guys are going to get on a, a plane Friday, a trim down, a traveling party. You get to the hotel, and you're, in essence, not in essence, you actually are quarantined there, and it's basically – bus, plane, hotel, bus, ball game. How do you see that, uh, that working and, and why is it necessary? Well, we're a traveling bubble. You know, if we're, if we're completely pure before we take off, we want to be completely pure when we return. And uh, one of the safest states 
to be in in the United States right now is the state of New York. Our numbers are unbelievable. We're, I don't know, with two weeks under 1% or something like that. So we are, the numbers are through the roof and the athletes, Syracuse numbers are better than that. And then the university and the athletes numbers are better than those numbers. So they're, they're really incredible. And we just don't want to throw everything. We've been working on this since June 8th when we started and we brought everybody back and we just don't want to throw the, throw all that stuff underneath the table. So it's important that we keep our traveling pod pure. And if, and if everybody has that attitude, then not, then we shouldn't just be excited about kicking off for the first game. We may be excited about shaking hands after the last one, knowing that we completed this season. That would be amazing. We haven't had a handshake in, in six months. Uh, the idea that what an accomplishment uh, that would feel like. Okay, and last thing, Coach, because I think that it's interesting for the fans to hear the level of thought and planning that has to go into this. Football coaches are known for their uh, orientation to detail uh, in the best of times, but certainly now you've got to have a plan and, and an act together and a, and a backup for every idea in every position. This week, obviously, uh, testing ramps up. To what extent are you prepared that virtually anybody on your traveling party, whether that's a, a running back, a linebacker, an assistant coach, or a trainer, that person could, on very short notice, be ruled unavailable? How do you operate from there? flexibility it's the key to success I mean and throw in there the head football coach I mean what happens if I I can't something happens to me and I can't go out there you you have to have a, a VP so to speak a vice president in every situation and uh, some may not be as strong as others but uh, a vice president none the same is going to become president is going to be making the calls and of course they'll have a, there'll be leadership across the board they'll be able to help them if those situations occur but uh, you're going on faith, belief without evidence that you're putting a, a good person in a good situation. And uh, even though they've never been in that situation before, they're going to make and handle the situation and, and handle it in the best of their ability with other people giving them uh, encouragement and support. Well, no doubt it's going to test the uh, organization and the leadership of, of every program, Coach. And uh, we know that's one of your strengths. Can't wait to see how it works out. Can't wait to actually talk football with you. We'll, do that on game day, okay? Congratulations for making it this far, and best of luck. Matt, looks like you lost some weight, brother. You've been working out good during that pandemic. I went the other way, baby. I love my Perrys, and this has been week one of the Perrys Inside Scoop.